stream will be starting in a moment. Okay, so we are live now. And uh, for this project, for this video, for this stream, uh, we're going to be taking a look at the New York Times API once again, and specifically, we're going to be looking for the Articles API. And basically, as you can tell, we're just going to be returning some kind of image with a title and some text and some description of what the article is about. And uh, I think this will be for uh, articles from today backwards, I think so. I haven't really taken much of a look to it. But basically, we are going to follow the same process if you watched the last stream and the last YouTube video. So um, first of all, I'm going to start with uh, going to create a new application. So you have to sign in first of all. If you don't have an account with uh, New York Times, you have to sign in and create an account and validate your email. And then once you sign in, you can just come right here and create a new application. And you can see I was fiddling around with it. I created a new application called T News where this is now my API key, but I'm not going to use this for now. Instead, I'm going to create a new application. So I'm going to say new app. And then for the app name, I'm just going to say uh, T articles, right? The description isn't necessary, so I'm not going to place it. And then we're going to be dealing with the article search API. So I'm going to enable it right there. And then I'm going to say create. Oops. App could not be created. Why? Did I do something wrong? App could not be created. Let's say test. Let's say test. Mm, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Let me reload the page. Reload this page. Sign in. Really? It's still not signed in. What's happening with this thing? What is happening? Okay, there you go. So I'm signed in and let me go and create a new application. Or rather, let me delete this. Um, oh, you know what? You know what? Let me not delete it. I'm just going to create a new application, say new app, say uh, T articles, like that. And let me just say articles app. And then the article search API, I'm going to enable it once again and then create. And this should create a new application for me. So uh, app created. And you can see this is now my API key. And I have a secret as well. And basically, this is our app ID, which I'm not really going to use. Okay, so uh, before I continue, I just want to say that I've already canvassed my React application. So the React application is called nytimes-app. And as you can see uh, on the top, what I did was npx create react app nytimes-app. And that's basically it. Uh, once it finishes running, this is all that we're going to get. So right away, I'm going to cd into nytimes-app. And then I'm going to open Visual Studio Code. And then I can now close this window. Close this window. And then I'm going to go, in, go back into this APIs, into our API so that we can take a look at this. So I'm going to copy this first of all because we need it. And then in VS Code, I'm just going to create a new, uh, a new file. Just paste that in so that I don't have to keep coming back to this page to, pay, uh, to copy it. And then I'm going to go into APIs tab right there and go into article search API. And you can see they give an example call of what uh, uh, of what really uh, well the, the kind of data that we're going to get back from the API. And you can see at the end it says your key. So your key here, you're going to substitute it with your API key that you've just generated. And I think even if you were to copy this down, of course it would take uh, a moment. But if you were to copy this and use it, I think it would still work. I'm not sure, but I think so. But I generally recommend that you, you get a new API key for yourself. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to copy it. Paste it right there and I'm going to explain why. 
and then I'm just going to go to this, navigate to this, and change this in my address bar to my API key, which is this that I need to copy. So copy that, paste it inside there, and we should get back some data. And I'm using a JSON formatter, that's why my uh, the JSON data appears like this. So you can see that the status is okay, meaning uh, it's a status 200 HTTP request, a GET request. We have a corporate there that we're not really going to use, and we have the response. And you notice you notice that the response is an object that has an array called docs. So inside this array, we have the abstract, which is basically like the title of the uh, of the article. We have the web URL, which is the actual source of the article. We have a snippet here. We have a lead paragraph. We have print section, print page, the source, which is basically New York Times for every article inside here basically. And then we have multimedia, which has all of this. And then if we scroll down quite a bit, right about here, we have the published date, we have the document type, the news desk, we have the section name, we have the subsection name, and finally we have the byline, which is uh, basically uh, who wrote the article. Um, I think once we have all of that i think that will be the, uh, our data structure yeah because this uh, starts again so that's basically all the data that we're going to need so uh why was i copying this and i need this page to be open uh, as it is right there so the reason why i was copying this is because it's not a good idea to commit your api keys to github so we would like a way to hide it when we commit this to github and we can do that by going into the root of our application and creating a hidden file called dot env which we have to hide in our git ignore so if you go into git ignore and just place it somewhere there and say ignore the dot env file as well once you save it you'll notice that it it becomes grayed out like that so everything inside this file is not going to be committed to github and this is where we'd like to place our api key so i'm going to uh, cut this out and i'm going to say i'm going to say react underscore app and articles api key equals to this to my api key so i'm going to save that now the reason why i was copying this is because uh in our application i would like to substitute this with our api key now node.js provides a way to do this using process.env and i'm going to show you how to do that so right away let me close this Right away, I'm going to go into my source folder and uh, I'm going to create, I'm not yet started my server because of, uh, if I had to start my server before Node.js can process this as well as the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, if I had to start the server before Node.js can process this .env file, then it will just throw me an error, which I want to avoid. So I want to create some basic layout of our application before we start our server so that we avoid that error. So what I'm going to do is inside my app.js, I'm going to delete all of this and I'm going to return a fragment. And inside here, I'm going to return a div. Um, how do I structure this? I'm going to return a div, right? Um, rather than a div, let me just say a section. And then I'm going to remove these two from the top and I'm going to say import react from react. And then we need a few things as well. We need the use state, which we'll, uh, which we'll use to set up our state values. And then we'll get the use effect hook as well, which we'll use to fetch our data basically from the API. Uh, and that's where we're going to substitute our API key uh, from the one that is in the .env file. So right away, let me change this to an arrow function. Change this to an arrow function like that. And right away, I'm going to set up my state values where I'm going to say um, articles and set articles. This will be use state. And by default, it's going to be an empty array because once we fetch the data, we're going to be populating it with this docs array. So it's going to be populating this empty array. So uh, that's why you have an empty array to start with. And then another thing that I want to do is I want to be able to place a search box so that let me go back into this file you'll notice that uh, we have article search.json and then a query here that says election 
So if I were to change this query to something like politics, for example, then I want to be able to uh, rerun this get request with our API key so that we get articles uh, about politics. So this next state value that I'm going to set is going to be controlling uh, the query that we're going to place inside here. So I'm going to say const, uh, what should I call it, const term and set term that and this will be use state and by default because by default i want to fetch uh, like uh, let me say articles from uh, about everything really then i'm going to set my uh, state value into a string called everything everything like that okay so once we do that then i want to set up one final state value which will control our loading animation so i'm going to say const is loading and set is loading and this is going to use state and by default it's going to be true because anytime that i'm not displaying any data on the screen then i want to show a loading animation and then once we fetch our data from the api then i want to remove the loading animation so we're going to be targeting this function and set it to false and right away let me set up my use effect so i'm going to say use effect set up a callback function and an oops it should be curly brackets and an empty dependency array empty for now it's empty for now we we are going to set it into this term once we set up our our form to uh to search so inside this form i'm going to place a try catch block a try catch block and inside here i'm just going to console error the error so console error the error and then i'm going to say inside my try block i'm going to say const fetch articles and fetch articles is going to be an asynchronous function so this should be async and an arrow function where i'm going to say const response and let me just call it res equals to um await fetch and we're going to be fetching the url so i'm going to place it inside backticks so that uh, i'm able to use variables inside the string so i'm going to go inside this and just copy this copy this and we no longer need this file so don't save that and i'm going to paste it inside here now remember that i want to substitute this term right here for what we have inside here so what i'm going to do is just grab this and remove it and i'm going to set up a variable using dollar sign and curly brackets like that and set that to the term right there so i'm going to say term what this means basically is that uh, the query here will be will be substituted to whatever term that we have inside our use state and i'm going to show you that in a moment but let's deal with our process.env first so in order to access our our api key from our .env file then we need to target this variable right so i'm going to copy this down and once again i'm going to remove this place in my dollar sign and curly brackets and i'm going to say process dot env dot and then paste that in which is the name of our variable okay so once we do this this means that it's going to run this request right here it's going to substitute the query term for everything that we have uh, for the term everything which is basically our state value inside there and then once it reaches the api key node.js is going to access the react app articles api key from our dot env file that we have right there so uh, before I save this file and start our server, what I want to do is uh, just outside this, I'm going to say const articles equals to await res.json like that. And then I'm going to say console log the articles to see what we get back. So console log the articles, and then I need to call this function. So where did this function end? Is it here? Right articles nope what i do what did i do wrong oh i did this wrong okay this shouldn't be inside the try block this should be outside it and then this this bracket should go down there is that correct is that correct if it's wrong we'll know in a moment so i'm going to save this and then i'm going to start my server so npm start and then this should fetch um once our server starts then we should be able to see something on the screen on localhost 3 
thousand and sometimes uh, my machine takes a while to run this so we might sit here in some awkward silence for a moment okay so our dev server is up and running or almost up and running it's still loading Hmm. it's taking quite a while okay there you go so i'm going to open up my console right there and we should get an object which is basically correct and you'll notice that it's an object and this is also an object and then we have copyright we have the response and we have the docs which is basically our array that we want to do, to target so uh, the next thing that we need to do is get this from the console and get it to, do, to display on the screen so what i'm going to do is let me close this so what i want to do is um after we console log this then i would like to populate this empty array and i can do that by saying set articles set articles into articles dot and the reason for dot is because uh, i want to access the response object and then access the docs array okay so i'm going to say uh, dot response dot docs which will now populate uh, this empty array in the use state with our docs array that we get from our data so once i save that and just to show you that it works i'm also going to console log response dot docs like that and we should get an array of 10 items there you go so this is working this is working and now this has been populated our set articles uh, uh, state value has been populated with basically our docs array okay so once i do that then i'm going to go inside my section right there and i'm going to say um what do i want to say i want to map over my data so i'm going to say articles dot dot map and then say for every article I'm going to turn an arrow function and I'm going to destructure quite a few things and this will be coming from article and I want to destructure let's see the abstract we want the byline the headline okay headline is also here let's see headline where is headline okay there you go okay so let's just begin to destructure our ab abstract our abstract our headline we have our byline and remember our byline has objects inside it so i want to be able to destructure those objects i'm going to place a full colon and then place uh, other curly brackets and i'm going to destructure the original which is basically the uh, the name of the person where is it byline so the original is the name of the person who wrote the article and then once we get the abstract, the byline, and the headline, we want the lead paragraph. So we also need to destructure lead underscore paragraph. And then we need the news desk, the news desk. And then once we get the news desk, we need the section name probably. So section name, and then we need... Um, <laughs> section name web url yeah there it is web url and then the id so section underscore name web underscore url and then underscore id which will be our unique key value and then finally uh, i saw something i wanted and i want the word count so i'm going to say word underscore count like that and then once i get all this data then i want to structure how i want to display it so i'm going to return an article an article with the key of uh sorry underscore id like that and then once i get these articles then i just want to uh, start displaying my data so i'm going to say i want to return an h2 that says the headline headline like that and then below this h2 and i've just remembered that we don't really have access to these images you can see uh, the images are sort of stored like in a local repository or, or something so we, uh, even if i were to get this image from here all it would do is uh, show like a, a small bitmap image which uh, it doesn't really look nice that's why i've not destructured the image from here okay so what do we need 
we need um, the, the headline and then we have we need isn't the abstract the same as the um, okay yeah, we need a paragraph that says the abstract right abstract and then once we get the abstract we need uh, an href that goes to the actual URL so I'm going to say web underscore URL and then set the target to equal um, underscore blank which will open, open it up on a new page and then here I'm just going to say web resource resource like that and then once we get this then what do we need to do next is oh this is the lead paragraph wait a minute isn't the lead paragraph the same as the abstract lead paragraph is this and then this is the abstract okay they're not the same so what I want to do is for the abstract I'm going to return an h4 and then below this I'm going to turn a paragraph that says lead paragraph like that and then this is news desk news desk section name and the byline okay so once I do that then I want to return a ul with the list items how many are they they are one two three and four like that that oh, the first one would say original which is basically the name of the person the second one will say uh, news desk like that the third one will say section underscore name and then finally we are going to have word count word count so let me save this and let's see what we get back in our application oops i'm seeing 21 errors objects are not valid as a react Ooh. I'm waiting for the error found uh, hmm. set articles into articles dot response did I do this wrong what did I do wrong <laughs> set articles into articles dot response dot docs hmm what did I do wrong what did I do wrong let me move this console log articles equals to await res dot json which is basically this and then set articles into articles dot response dot docs right and then console error the error okay then we're fetching the articles okay and then we are saying articles dot map what's the what's the object that we're trying to access that it's telling us this let's see let's see dot response dot docs hmm <laughs> okay so I can see that this is running this is running which means our console log right here was working right so our console log was working so probably our issue would come somewhere here is it probably on the byline where i destructured it let me remove all this let me remove all this let's see and our application works so that means likely i destructured the byline wrongly so let's see byline I'm get the byline and I want the original isn't that correct so I'm getting the, I'm getting the byline right and then I want the original okay <laughs> what was it what was it Where's my byline? 
I don't even have my byline inside here. Okay, here it is. Let me see if I disable that. What happens if I disable that? <clears throat> okay, so it's not this. Let me disable this. And it's not that. Wait, what? What, what, what? Let me go on a bigger screen. What? 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 <sighs> we have article.map. We have article. Okay. We have abstract. We have headline. Original. We have our return. Objects are not valid as we are child. Found object with keys main. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I get you now. I get you. Let me just confirm where we have underscore ID. Hmm. That doesn't look right. I mean, it looks right, but it doesn't look right in my application. Underscore ID, underscore ID. Let me change this to something else. Let me change this to abstract. Let's see if this works. Still nothing. Still nothing works. The above error occurred in the H2 component. Why didn't I see this? Headline. Headline is an object. Headline is an object. Headline is an object. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so there we are. Took a moment to find, so I need to destructure the main inside the headline. So I'm just going to save decimal colon and save main. So that inside here, I'm going to return main instead of headline. It takes a while sometimes, but you know, it works. So reload this and get rid of the errors. Encountered two children the same key. Let me turn this key to underscore ID so that we no longer have that error. And there we go. Okay, okay, okay. So now that we got something displaying on the screen, what I want to do is grab Tailwind CSS from cdnjs.com. So grab Tailwind CSS. Copy the link tag. Go inside my public folder and inside index HTML. Uh, what okay it hung there for a moment i thought it crashed remove these comments remove this and then just place this here and then grab this remove it change this to ny times articles like that and then change this theme color to white like that so save that and then this should reflect in our application right there. So the document now goes into uh, the title, sorry, now says NY times articles. Okay, okay, okay. So what do we need to do now? Uh, I want to add a div inside here. And this div will have a class of showcase. And then I'm going to add another div inside with a class of overlay with an H1 that says you are or rather they say viewing articles are articles about and then i'm going to explain what i'm going to place inside here and then right inside here then we're going to have our form which we haven't created yet but i'm going to create it after we we've styled this component a bit better so inside this h1 i want um I want the H1 to say whatever term it is that we have passed inside here or we are searching for inside here or the default term that is inside here. So for example, all I have to do is just say, uh, I want the term, the term, really, the term like that. Once I save this, then it should say viewing articles about everything. So I'm going to save that and we should see viewing articles about everything right there so if i were to change everything now just to prove to you that this actually works 
notice that we are viewing articles about uh, everything which is basically something of something so if i change this to election then we should see articles about election because this election now gets substituted inside this term and which will get updated and this will get rerun and this should now also say election so i'm going to view uh it says viewing articles about election right there and you can see it's automatically going about election somewhere there uh, voter election somewhere there election in the senate you know and so that proves that our state bodies are functioning so let me just tell this up a bit close this place this to the side close it down like that and uh first of all i want this to have a background image so let me go into pexels.com pexels.com and grab uh news let me search for news and just grab something like what you can grab this this looks nice okay there you go so i'm going to copy the image address and then inside my index css because i want this to be a background image i'm going to remove this and i'm going to remove this and this and i'm going to target the showcase class and i'm going to set the background to url like that and place it inside strings and set this to no repeat and center and cover and then set the height to 300 pixels so once i save this then we should see it reflecting right there okay so we have our background image which looks nice let me change this to 400 pixels like that and then i'm going to target the overlay class into the showcase so showcase overlay and i'm going to say um, the background color for this should be rgba 0.5, which is basically uh, a transparent black and then i'm going to set the height to 400 pixels as well and then display flex align item center and just for content center which will then bring this right at the center right there and i'm going to set the flex direction to column to column because uh, once we add our form then i don't want this to be side by side by the form instead i want them to be in column form so i'm going to save that and then this should come right there with a, with a dark background image so let me reduce this to 0.4 and i realize i'm talking a bit faster so sorry for that in case you are not following basically all we were doing is i added a background image and then i set the height to 400 pixels which is basically the height from here up to here and then i'm going inside the overlay class which contains the text with our h1 and we're going to add the form in a moment and then once you do that then i'm also setting the height to 400 pixels because i'm already adding a background color on this and i want it to take up the, the same height as the image does so that it has um, uh, this transparent black or almost translucent black and then display flex uh flex duration column and align item center and justify content center just make sure that the div is aligned vertically and horizontally to the center as you can see right there so that's basically all i was doing okay and uh, hmm, 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 hmm. let me see if this can be to the right on smaller screens so that it moves just a bit to the right and then i'm going to go inside my h1 inside here give this a class name of um text for xl and font bold and text white like that and then say text center like that and then say our margin bottom of four for our margin when we add the form and then go inside this overlay and say padding on the x of five just so that in case you're being on a smaller screen it has a bit of space between the margin and and the, the text okay so let's tell our this section so inside this section i'm just going to say give this a class name of um hmm, what should i say padding on the x of five and padding on the y or sorry padding on the top of 10 padding on the bottom of 20. yeah that should be correct so that we have uh this space right there <clears throat> excuse me and then once i do this then i'm going to target my h2 inside here give this a class name oops of font bold and text for xl as well too big to xl 
that's nice for smaller screens okay and then just say margin bottom of two pushes it down just a bit from this and then hmm, <laughs> let me go inside here and give this a class of grid and grid columns dash one and a gap of 10 because it's really confusing me i don't know where uh, each of these articles end so add a grid gap to separate them just a bit okay so this web resource link i want to push it to the bottom right here so i'm going to target it grab this and just press alt hold down alt and just press the down key to move it down like that and it should move down right there and then um <laughs> i'm going to give this a class name of underline so that it has an underline so that we know that this is a link so it's looking nice and then inside this ul i'm going to give this a class name of margin y of four so pushes it away from the top and bottom right there and then i'm going to say inside this i'm going to say news desk news desk add a flag so that we know why we are saying washington and this 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 will be section name like that and then this is word count like that okay looking nice let me place this inside a span span inside here and grab this as well place it inside a span and grab this as well and place it inside a span and then i'm going to grab these three spans because they are also going to have the the same styling of font bold like that okay there you go looking almost nice so let's see let's see i think this looks nice really let me see let me see let me add uh this is the abstract the h4 oh this is an h4 okay instead of this being an h4 let me make it into a paragraph because it's so much easier it's more of a paragraph really that's what i mean and then let me add a class name here or rather you know what this looks fine this looks fine in terms of in terms of a um a news article and then let me go into my body and give this body a background color of dark gray so background color of let me see ee -E -E. a dark gray not a drug dark gray really but a light gray and then go back into app.js and inside this article i'm going to give this article a class name of bg white so that it stands out from um from the gray background color and then I'm going to say padding on the Y of 5 and padding on the X of, hmm, rather padding on the Y of 10 and padding on the X of 5. So that it pushes inwards just like that. And then say rounded, large, so that the borders around here have rounded borders. So that's what we have currently. It's looking nice, looking very nice okay so what is remaining let me add a bit more margin between these headings and which one was it here let me say five okay hmm. <laughs> so what is remaining for this screen is basically just to scale it up and scaling it up is going to be easy where i just want to target this h1 for example and i'm going to go and say this h1 and i'm going to say that for large screens i want the text to be let's say 6xl make it bigger right about there and then also increase the sizes for this so i'm going to go inside um what was this this is an h2 and i'm going to say that for large screens once again increase the text to 2xl let's see how this looks did i do that correctly oh it's already 2xl so let's say 4xl for xl okay 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 and then um <laughs> i want to limit these articles to a specific portion of the screen so they don't go all the way end to end because this is this is really hard to read if your eyes are going to be going end to end so what i want to do is for large screens right there i'm going to go inside this article and i'm going to say large i want the width to be um let's say 9 over 12 which is 75 percent of the screen which should reduce it as you can see and then for large screens once again i'm going to say mx auto which will now center this article right there 
look at that looking very nice even on bigger screens looking nice okay okay so once we do this uh then the only thing that i think we're remaining with is just to implement our form okay so let's do that right away and i'm going to create a new component inside my source folder close this down and i'm just going to call this search form.js like that and i'm going to say rafce and we're importing the search form and um what do we need to import we need to import the use state because i want the state to be managed by the form locally so use state excuse me and i'm going to set up my state values right away and i'm going to say const uh what should they call this um <laughs> text and set text and this will be equal to use state and by default it's going to be an empty string okay so once i do that then i want to create the form and i'm going to create a form right there with no action and i'm going to create an input and the input will be type of text and with a placeholder that says um let's say eg politics politics right there and then we're going to have a submit button a button of type submit just saying such right there uh, is that it let's save that and let's render it to see how it looks so right where was it where did i have my comment for the form right here so i'm going to remove this comment and i'm going to say search oops i want to render my search form component really i want to render my search form component so i'm just going to say search form and once i click enter then it should import it automatically for me right there okay so we have a search form let me save that and let's see how it looks we should have um, an input right there and then a search button right there so let's tell out the button a bit I'm going to give this a class name of bg green dash 400 let's say padding on the y of one padding on the x of two and rounded borders so rounded large and then let's say text white and then let's go inside the input give this a class name of padding y of one padding x of two like the button and then oh i've just realized um i want i don't want the the left border radius on the button so what i'm going to do is go inside the button right here or right here sorry and then say rounded uh dash right dash large which should remove this border radius right there and then for the input i'm going to do the opposite where i'm going to say rounded dash left dash large like that there you go so we have our input right there and then we have our search button right there and uh i don't think i don't know whether i've noticed but uh i've clicked the button and it has reloaded and i've just realized that i didn't add our loading animation so let me do the loading animation first so remember we set up some state values for loading and is loading and set is loading sorry so what i want to do is uh the loading animation is dependent on this because this is where uh uh this is the uh the structure of our data how we are representing this on the, on the device so i'm going to cut this out and i'm going to place some curly brackets inside here and i'm going to do a conditional so where i'm going to say if is loading is true then i want to say um wait a minute what uh wait 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 oh yeah okay if is loading is true then i want to return an h1 an h1 that says loading dash 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 and then once it's false then i just want to return everything that we have inside here and remember that is loading is set to true by default uh, right here so if i save this then we'll only see loading on the screen right there let me extend this to be bigger give this a class name of text center margin top of 20 font bold and text for excel 8 xl 6 xl okay so uh by default because it's true then we have loading so we want to uh we want that when we fetch our data then we want to set is loading to false 
so that this no longer shows and instead this section with our data shows. So just to show you what I mean, if I change this to false, you'll notice that loading, uh, it goes away and then we get, we get our data. But we don't want to do this manually. So what we're going to do is, once we, see, we fetch our data right there, and once we have populated our state values, then we just go below this and say set is loading to false, like that. And you'll notice that, see that? If I reload, we have a loading animation. And then once everything is loaded, then we have our data displayed. So that's simple. It's just that. And then another thing that I want to do is by default, I don't want to uh, reload the page every time I click this. So what I'm going to do is inside the uh, the form, I'm going to place an on submit event on submit and I'm going to place it a function and I'm going to call this function handle submit. And right away, I'm going to create this function. Where I'm going to say const handle submit equals to and oops, this is an arrow function equals to and we're targeting the synthetic event of E where we're going to say oops, where we're going to say E dot prevent prevent default like that so that once I save this and I try to submit this again you'll notice that it no longer reloads it no longer reloads because we are preventing the default now one thing that I want to do is inside the input we, do, we want to have an on change attribute so that every time that uh, the input changes inside here then uh, our form will manage the local state and then once we submit it then it's going to search for articles uh, with whatever input we have inside there so i'm going to say on change equals to and i'm going to place it in an inline function where we're targeting the e event once again right there and i'm going to say uh, once we target the e the synthetic event of e then i'm going to say set text which is our state value right there so we're going to say set text into e dot target dot value which will basically give us uh, whatever is typed in and just to show you that it works, I'm going to go on a bigger screen right there and open up my console and I'm going to open up my components tab. Oops, there you go, components tab, it took a while to load. And remember, this is now our form that we have. And notice that the state is currently empty because by default, we have set it to empty. But if I come and change this to election, for example, you notice that it's now changed to whatever we have inside there. So that means that this event dot target dot value is actually working. Okay, so um, <laughs> what do we need to do next? What we need to do next is um, once we have rendered our form right here, then we want to pass in some props which will target this, the term that is inside here, and then we can now destructure uh, the prop. From here, we can now destruct it into the actual component, and then we will set whatever we are destructed inside here so that it will uh, go inside the input and when it reloads. That explanation confused me. Okay, let me try again. Inside our app.js, we are going to pass in some props inside our search form component so that uh, the props are going to be targeting this term, our state value of term, which is inside here. And it's going to be checking for whether we have changed the term or not, so that when we submit uh, the form, then all of this is going to be run once again, and then it will only return the results containing the term that we entered inside the form. I think that's a much better explanation. Okay, uh, what props do we have inside here? Let me get out my cheat sheet. And we have, uh, we have such text, so I'm going to say such such text and we're going to set this to um we're going to set it to text which is basically uh the state value that we have inside here remember and then once you set this to text then we want to say uh we are targeting the text sorry we are targeting the text that we have inside here and we once we target the text then we want to say we want to target our set term function inside here and set that term into the text that we get from the input so I'm going to say set term into the text. Is that correct? If it's not correct, we're going to know in a moment. Now, once we do this, it means that uh, we can now access this prop from our component. Let me save this. 
we can now access this prop from our component did this crash okay did not and we can destruct it inside here by saying such text such text like that and then inside our handle submit then we just want to say uh, uh such text we change it into the uh, we, we pass in the text that we have our state value right so this this means that uh this prop is coming from right here such text which means that um whenever this text changes then this prop is going to be targeted and it's going to uh, uh it's going to call on this input once again which will change our uh, which will make this function run once again but all is not complete yet all is not complete remember that all of this is dependent on the dependency array that we have inside here and what we want to rerun whenever uh, all of this is called on once again is the term so all we have to do is just pass in the term inside here and then save it and then let's see if this works and let's say let's see joe biden Let's see, it says showing results about Joe Biden. And there you go, we have results about Joe Biden. So it's looking nice, looking nice. But one thing that I want to do is now change this into capitalized text so that we have um, capitalization for every word. So I'm going to go into this H1 and right before my media query here, I'm going to say capitalize. Like that, we should now capitalize it like that. So if I were to say um, animals, it, it, it updates the state inside here because we have term right there so it, update, it updates the state and we have results about animals and if i were to search for uh wildlife wildlife then we have results about wildlife looking very very nice and uh what else can we search for um uh, aoc i like aoc let's search for aoc let's see you see aoc uh anyway you can read those articles by yourself and of course just to make sure uh, all of these articles do work but remember we're using the new york times api so they will always take you to the new york times api uh, the new york times website i mean so you see that everything is always about the new york times website even this one will take you to the new york times website but then it knows uh, but then it uh, it shows really uh, the type of article that you're looking at so I think that will basically be it. I think that's a very good project. We have implemented our search right there. We have implemented, um, you know what? Let me see if I can change this background image to the top. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to grab this, or rather I'm going to grab this and then add a media query, oops, at media, mean width of let's say around 10 24 pixels oops i want to change this really i want to target the showcase and change this to top instead of right we should do that so we have some kind of article on the background that looks as if we are reading something so i'm going to save that and that i think that will basically be it for this project it's looking quite nice looking quite nice now remember that from our api as i as i'd explained earlier is that we can't really access these images because they're technically not links to the images instead they're just like uh, some stored uh, local local value if i get a way to access these images then be sure that i'll do a follow-up for this video where i'm going to show you how to do it but remember that if you're doing anything anything all you need to do is practice practice and some more practice you just need to get uh, to get used to doing things by yourself because you can't uh, you can't uh, really uh, depend on tutorials all your life so this this actually works really nice and i really love it elections it's looking very nice if i do say so myself looking very nice so thank you guys for watching once again if you're watching on youtube remember to leave a like and subscribe leave a comment oh ah, i would really like to know how you found out about me because i realized that uh i was checking some analytics the other day and i realized that my viewers are from all over the world and i would really like to know how you really
came to know of me or found my channel, whether by accident or not. And once you do that, remember to leave, uh, remember to subscribe to the channel as well and leave a like and share the video. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for following the stream and I will see you in the next video.